Welcome and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Have you ever wanted to make a real power system? Yes, real power systems, ones with cables, generators, batteries, lights, things like that. Well, that's what we're doing today, so I hope you're comfy, got some snacks, because we're going to jump right into it. To give you a little bit of a general high-level overview of how this system's going to work, we're going to have a power node that's going to go onto our actors here. It's just this little static mesh component that you see that looks copper. We're going to have a cabler that goes on our character. And it's just another static mesh component. And then we're going to have an actor component that actually goes on our game state. And that's going to want, that's going to manage our attachments to all of our, uh, all of our power systems, I guess. Yeah. That's how you want to saw it. So the power nodes themselves here in our actors. So this is an actor component or a static mesh component that's holding this. We've got an interface for our power node because we'll need to, when we do a line trace, we want to check to see if we have this and we're just going to do it through an interface instead of like a tag or something. The properties here, so properties here has power capacity and power consumption. So whatever the max capacity you can hold is. And then this is power consumption is either you're producing power, consuming power, or doing nothing. So it's either positive, negative, or zero, right? Now the power node has on the begin play, we are simply just going to make a timer. And this timer is going to just simply check the on status of the power node. Now you'll see that we have a few power properties here. We have, of course have the properties. We have our current power we have the update time and timer handle. So the current power is whatever the current power on the grid is. So when we check the on status now, and all we're gonna do is take that current power, check to see if the addition between those two are greater than or equal to zero, and then we're just gonna send out a notify. And so it'll just do a, just, just a timer notifying to check to see if it's on, if it's on or whatever, it'll just send out power status update. Here, we could then use that in an actor, something like this, where we go and we bind onto that power status, right? And we run this function. And all this is doing right now is it's taking this lights scene component and just setting the visibility and propagating it to children. So it'll turn off all the lights uh, underneath this. So that's, it's a category basically for this. And this is set to an abstract class. That is why it kind of looks weird in the editor here. It looks blank, but we have various children here. The children aren't really all that impressive because they're just holding configurations for what the power nodes do. So like a battery, the battery here, if you look on the power node, it's got on the power properties, it has some capacity and doesn't have any consumption or anything like that. The generator, if we look at the node here, we can see on the properties, it has some capacity, but it, and it produces power, right? It has some capacity and it produces power. The light, the lights here, Right, we have a light under here now. We don't have anything here, so we will check the power node, and you'll see here that we have minus five, and we have a little bit of capacity, just so that it has a little bit of buffer for when it does the updates on the game state. So we'll, it'll be like that. So those are actor, those are our main actors and how they work together basically. And now over in the character, the character component here that's going to go on our character on the begin play, we'll save save the first person character, right? And then this has a key press. It has it has the traditional cabling key press here. So a lot of this stuff should look very familiar because it's just handling all the cables. So you got various properties for the cables. So what does our key press actually do? Well, our key press, it's going to run a line trace from the camera, which is this. You've seen the line traces plenty of times. It just runs a simple line trace. But at the end here, it takes that hit component and passes it through that interface, checks to see if it's valid. And if it's not itself, uh, then we'll just pass it out through through this, yeah, it's a macro, so it's just going to pass it out as as hit, no hit, and then hit component, things like that. So that's our line trace. So it'll do a line trace. So if we're not cabling, we'll do a line trace. We'll set up the first node that we hit, and then we'll say we're cabling. Then on the second time around, we press E onto a onto a component, onto one of the hit components. We'll make that cable, making the cables exactly as we've had it before. You just make the cable component to, well, this is where it's probably a little special because you want to do it on the end component here basically what the one that you pass it in. So we're attaching it to the second node, the cable that we're attaching it to. Now we probably want to make this an actual actor that we spawn in. Uh, it'll be probably easier in the long run, but for now, this is how it'll work. And so, yeah, we just do the classic attach the end to the components, and then we just set up a bunch of properties, right? That's all we do here for the make cable. Now, after that, so on the second time around, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our game state. We're going to grab a grid manager component. So this is our other component that we have, right? This is the game state component. So this holds all of our nodes and edges. So in this one, we'll get to it, but it has a function here that says add nodes and edges. And all it does is it takes in the source and the target and it just, that's it. That's all it does. It just takes in the source and the target. So whatever the first source was here, and then this is obviously the target. 
So pass both of those in into the component and that's it. On the second sequence here, we're just gonna clear some variables and we're gonna call it a day. That's our cabler. Now over in our game state folder, we're gonna have this component, the power grid manager. That's gonna hold all the meat and potatoes of our grid or power grid. We'll have this power edge. Now this power edge is just a structure that's a data representation of our cable. So it's gonna hold the linking between our two nodes, the source and the target. The power grid manager here, so what does this have? This has all the nodes that are on the on the system. It has all the power edges that are on the system. It has the total power on the system. Now this one is very similar to how Planet Crafter does it, but Planet Crafter, they don't link power systems together, so they don't have batteries or anything like that. It's just you place the generator and then it's just a total power. Well, in this one you at least have to connect the node to this to the to the grid in order for it to be recognized. So that being said, right, we have the nodes, edges, total power. The add nodes and edges, before we go over this begin play, but you can see what the begin play does. Just It just does the basic setup here for a timer and then do DFS on power nodes here. So this is a custom function. But let's take a look first at this add nodes and edges because this is what was used in the cabler component. This, compa this is all it does. It adds it to those two arrays, creates those power edge structures and adds it to the array. So that's how we add a... That's how we add a node to our power grid system. Now we have also another one here that I'd like to mention before we jump into the do, and that's the get edges. So all this is going to do is take in one of those power nodes, and it's just going to loop through the power edges and find all the ones that are the source, add that to a local here, and then on the completed, just return that local. And that's all that's going to do. It is a pure function because it is just a simple get. So uh, when we see it in the functions, we'll, you'll know. So this do DFS, right, on the update. What does this do? Well, this is going to loop through our power nodes and do this DFS function. Now, what is DFS? DFS is depth first search. It's basically a recursive way of going through all of our nodes to find data. In this case, we're doing we're going to calculate the total power. So the DFS, so when we get to the first node, right? When we get to the first node, we're going to do a calculation for the power, and we're going to do a calculation for the current, for the total power and the current power. The current power is the thing that's on the power the nodes, that is basically like limiting it, its power, right? So if you have a battery, you can have a maximum of 500, let's say. If you have a generator, you maybe have a little bit of power. And if you have like lights or something, maybe you don't have any batteries or any power. So that's basically what that means. The total power is the total power on the network, of course. So you're going to sum that up. And this is just the clamp between the power capacity to figure out the current power. There is a multiplier here for the update time, because if you want the update time to be really fast and you don't really want it to mess with your mess with your like calculations here like let's say your power consumption is like five right but you are manipulating this update time maybe it was set to five because your update time was every second but then if you change this to every point one second well then now you have to recalculate it so i just added a quick multiplier here that's it so after we do all that power setup right we're going to check to see if that set here that we pass in for the visited which is which comes from this do DFS, right? This is a local variable that's here that's a set of power nodes. So that way we can keep track of the ones that we've already been visited, right? Or we already visited. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to check to see if the power node that we pass in is not in this set, and we're going to continue. So therefore, if it's not in the set, let's just add it to the set. And then from there, we'll calculate all the edges. So like you saw before, we'll just calculate all the edges for that source. So this will be all the targets. And then we're going to run the recursive call of DFS onto this visited. So it'll recursively go through all of our nodes, mark them effectively with this set as visited, and that's pretty much it. That's all it's going to do. And so now the results of that is we can go up to here. We have the lights, right? We have the generators. So if I go up to here and so if I'm here, I click on it. You can see now. Okay, we're going to start cabling. We can go up here and we can click on it. Ooh, cable. Nice. But you'll notice no lights. Huh, no lights. And we can even check, bring this back up. We can even check to see here. Because I did set those variables to public, they probably don't need to be public, but because I set them to public, we can see our various properties here about our nodes. And you'll see we have zero for the current power. Yep, we still have zero for the current power. If I go over here and say, well, let me just hook up this generator. Ah, uh, still, still zero power. Because you notice we're generating two, two, we're using five. So no power. All right, next one, six. Now what? Why isn't it turning back on? Well, that is a good question because there it is. It takes a moment for it to update because it runs every 0.1 second and it needs to just like recalculate to make sure that the power is like, it just needs to do some calculations, okay? 
but you'll see that it easily swapped up to there. Now, let's go ahead. These blue ones are some batteries. So let's go ahead. We can probably see a better example when I connect these up because this actually has some power capacity to it. Oh, no, it just went up to 500. Huh. It went up to 500 immediately. Oh, I know why. Because the update time is really high. That's why. The update time is really fast. So if I was to actually change this update time to really slow. But either way, it's it's working. Well, I'm going to set it to like uh, 0.5 seconds here on the update speed. Just because. And so let's just hook up a generator here first to a battery, right? We'll hook up one generator to a battery. We'll be good to go. See, we'll, we'll generate some power. We got some, some power going. So it's uh it's building up. It's building up. Now this doesn't have any sort of power distribution system, so if I was to connect two batteries up, right? We can see that the batteries on the power nodes, they'll they'll be at the same current power because this is a global power grid effectively, so it'll be there. But we'll notice if I click on this one, other one, it'll be at the same Okay, well okay, it's in the two hundreds now. If I click on this one, it's still in the two hundreds, right? So that's good. So we have a generator generating power batteries we can take this now and we can go over here and we can just connect this oh light cool but wait you're saying wait a second and then yeah because we have one generator if you look at the power nodes you'll see that our power is actually decreasing by three ish i mean it, the times are a little strange but yeah it's basically decreasing by three because we're generating two but using five and we're out of power if I was to decide to hook up the rest of the generators, this will generate some power. And the light will turn on. Now we can see our power is actually going up because we're generating excess power. Nice. Well, I hope you guys found that helpful, enjoyable, and I hope you can use it in your game. It's not game ready. It's not game ready. I'll, I'll, I'm going to prefix it with that. But uh, it's a good system to get started, and I hope this helped you understand power systems. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.